Just a quick uh, kind of unboxing and pack depackaging here. They do use double, two layers of double wall cardboard boxes, so those appear to be packed pretty well. Rolls of vinyl film. Does not come with the cap. They also include a sample. I guess that's just a test to make sure it works. I guess the vinyl rolls can get a little bit beat up, but uh, they appear to be okay. Other than that, closed cell foam to hold it. Extra thick honeycomb cardboard on the ends. Uh, at least these companies are getting better at packaging these kind of products, so I'll get this out of here. Here's all the accessories, comes with everything including extra blades and the little blade, uh, custom adjustable blade holder. Those are carbide blades so they ought to last a decent amount. Software USB. It comes with a licensed version of SignMaster but the most basic version. There are other like open source software programs which I may end up using to drive this thing. There's a lot of criticism of the basic master, SignMaster but you know at least it comes with a piece of software that you can just use basic. It has two input options, a serial and a printer style. So that's a USB-A USB -A to USB-B printer style, screws, all the hardware. The one thing I will criticize is they didn't even bother to, they made the cuts on these pieces of metal these extruded aluminum pieces but they didn't blow them out so you have all these little aluminum splinters they should have cleaned those out other than that it's a pretty complete setup it even comes with a couple plastic squeegees to apply the vinyl once you've got it cut so here's the machine pretty decent backlit display it goes pretty fast I'm gonna be using the pen adapter because uh, I was foolish setting up the little knives. It turns out that you really need to be careful. They're carbide, but the edges are so fine that they just, if they touch any kind of metal, they basically snap. And so I had the first two I had sticking out too far along with too much cutting pressure. And when it's in this mode, you can do, you can adjust the cutting pressure. And so my recommendation now I've learned and broke the cutters is versus the manual you just want to have this the very fine tip sticking out and then you want to set your cutting pressure way low like 30 grams and then work your way up until it cuts the vinyl properly because if it's too much pressure sticks out too far this is like a protective you know hard plastic surface but it'll stick through that hit the aluminum and then just chip the end of the cutter just almost immediately which is unfortunate but learning, that's just the way it is with vinyl cutters. There's a learning curve with adjusting the knives just right. Otherwise, it's pretty normal. You can put it in this mode, the offline pause mode, and then you can move the head around. And then if you click origin, it will actually start off. That will be its new home point. So you can cut something here and you can cut something here. Things I like is the rollers. One, go way out to the edge. This button is a home button. It knows that's a travel limit. But then the rollers, they do have a little gap here, but that's to support it so they have even pressure. I mean, as far as the speed, it's pretty impressive. We'll do a little uh, print here. I did one on one, one already. As you can see, there's some a uh, bit of damage to this paper. And what I realized is if you're doing complicated prints where it's doing a bunch of cutting back and forth, you really want to lighten up the pressure on the rollers because once through it's fine but because it's a cutting machine if you're doing complex things it's going back and forth repeatedly and will really dent things up the only issue i've had uh it you can use the serial number with the new signmaster v5 allow you to download off the website so that's a nice thing is you can get the latest version of the software uh, and you don't have to use a version that comes with the printer uh this kt720 or ki720 cutter is apparently a real common Chinese cutter so you don't have to use this there's all sorts of software programs and spoolers and stuff that you can use it does give you a little preview and let's see how it goes one issue is every once in a while I'll throw up an error and then if you just click cut now again it'll work it's I think it's 
partially do with the software and not the cutter. And here goes spooling. Start with the leading edge like this, not the way I had it, otherwise it'll spit it out. I kind of like that you can have it in the offline mode and then come over the printer and put it online. This is at the maximum speed, 800 millimeters a, uh, a minute or a second or something. So on something complicated like this, you can see where as it runs back and forth, you really want to have just enough pressure to where it doesn't slip but not so much that as it runs back and forth, it starts wearing tracks where the rollers are. And so it's like, you know, it's just a plotter, just like the old school, or actually still used for like printing out plans, except for instead of having multiple pens, you can put in a pen or a knife and it cuts vinyl. I mean, not super noisy. I guess some of the higher end ones even have a laser that will cut off the piece of vinyl. I don't think this one has it. Most people are just doing signs and vehicle graphics and that type of stuff, so they won't be doing something so intricate like this. Um, and so it'll print really fast. This is just a very complicated drawing just to kind of demonstrate one of the samples that comes with the software. I didn't have the paper adjusted right. I had it too far over. Which is one of the reasons why it's so important to have that blade just barely sticking out because if you do something like that where it goes over, then it's not cutting through the paper, it's just hitting the plastic. And if it has too much pressure, it'll just cut through that plastic barrier and hit the aluminum chip. I don't know what the positioning accuracy is. I think it's 0.1 or 0.01 millimeters. It's fine. It draws these graphics basically perfectly. It means they'll cut them perfectly too, you know. And you can slow it down and that gives you a little bit more accuracy. If you were to cut something like this on vinyl, it would be a nightmare to try to cut out or to use the razor blade to knock out all the little pieces and pull up your stencil. It would be basically impossible. This is a graphic really made for drawing rather than for cutting or for a laser engraver. Anyway. And here we go, like, come on, you can just see, even at its highest speed, it doing circles and 
you know, the text, this little finer border text, complicated shapes. Oh, you can even see in the sticker paperboard it's, or the <laughs> shopping bag, that it's still leaving a little bit of a track in it. So that's probably the biggest thing is just balancing that roller pressure, which is just done by adjusting these screws. Those screws adjust the spring tension. Other than that, um, the accuracy is fine and it's pretty fast. It does have area for t the two rollers. You can, it, it has multiple rollers just so you can have multiple colors, just one on each roller and you can set one off. Uh, the stand does have casters, as I mentioned, but looking online, a lot of people say don't put on the casters, uh, just because as it moves back and forth, it kind of wants to shimmy on the casters itself. And it just sets up on this sand. It doesn't actually screw into the stand. So you want to be aware of that. But it has feet on it. So it's also designed just to be put on a table. And 28 inches is a reasonable width for a commercial vinyl cutter. Um, but these things, you can get these things just hugely wide. Five, six foot wide. You know, people putting on, printing out uh, vinyls to put on the side of buses and vehicles. You use really wide cutters. You could do that with this 28 inch, you just need to do multiple sections. The other thing is, so you adjust it really light until it just cuts the vinyl and it has like this little test thing. And so all the test does What's interesting is it knows it's already done a test, so if you press it repeatedly, it just steps on over. But that's at least one neat thing about this is that you can um, repeatedly test and it just cuts squares. And then you can see if it's cutting deep enough. So you start off too light and then you go to just where it's cutting properly because as you change thicknesses of vinyl, brands of vinyl, maybe you're cutting stickers, which is a different kind of plastic. You'll want to repeatedly test it until you know that it's getting just the right cut. So it's kind of convenient that it has just a built-in, just quick little test cuts that you can do right on the machine to make it quicker to set up the cutter. The one thing I will mention is it does not have a stop or a stop button on this side, which is a little bit annoying. I don't know if you tell it. I think the software limits it because it knows it's 28 inches, but if you're doing like this manual adjustment, and it'll make a terrible sound as the belt, tooth belt slips. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's about all I got for you today. Uh, this is probably, uh, I think it's a neat item, but it's probably something I'm not going to keep. I'll probably end up uh, selling it. But I always kind of wanted to see what one of these is about. And, you know, for the price, whatever it is, around, I guess it's 250 or 280 bucks is a pretty cheap price to get into one of these vinyl cutters that will uh, at least get you going seems pretty decent for the price there are obviously a lot better brands and much more expensive ones but if you're not a business who's making t-shirts or vehicle graphics cutting vinyl then something like this allows you to get something that's bigger than a cry cut and has reasonable performance anyway see you next time